Hey, good morning, everybody. We are still in unit nine, parametric polar and vector equations. Today, we're looking at lesson five, which is polar equations. Polar equations are a new way or a different way to graph on the coordinate plane. Now we're used to the Cartesian coordinate plane where you have your X axis and your Y axis, and eventually there's a Z axis to get three dimensional shapes. But we're gonna go back to two dimensional and this one is polar. So think of your unit circle when you rotate around with degrees and then you're going to go out a certain number of points. So instead of X and Y, we use R and theta. R is for radius and theta is the angle. R is the distance from P to the origin, radial coordinate, I'm thinking radius. Theta is the angle between OP and the positive axis, your angular coordinate. So to get used to these, let's try graphing some. So this is kind of crazy that we, we learn what they are and then we jump into calculus, but we'll do that momentarily. So we're gonna plot these. So point A, is at 845. All right, so here is what it looks like when we plot these. So for letter A, it's 845. Now I personally, not that I have any authority over this whatsoever, think that the angle should come before the radial coordinate, but it doesn't. Um, you can define, just kind of like you can on a graph paper, you can define each one of these rings to be whatever you want. On this first example, I'll make the first one one here we'll do this one two three four five six seven eight but there's nothing that says you can't make each one of those rings count as 0.5 or something like that so 845 so you're going to go up to 45 degrees and eight that is point a not too bad point b negative five 150 so you're going to go all the way around to 150 too far, back it up, 150. Now that negative five, so instead of coming out here to one, two, three, four, five, that negative means you actually have to go backwards. So you're gonna go backwards, let's do this. One, two, three, four, five. So here is point B. Point C, is for negative 210. Now, instead of going in the positive direction, you're going to go in the negative direction. So 210. Now, I kind of like 210 in the positive, and then I'm just gonna get the mirror image of that up and around over to here. And if I want to go out four, it's one, two, three, four. There you go, got that one. And finally, letter D. Let's do negative six and negative 90. So negative 90 is down here. And then negative six would actually be going backwards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you kind of have to think of yourself uh, standing in the middle, then making steps forwards or backwards. So you stand in the middle and you rotate the number of degrees or radians that they want. And then you take steps forward or backward. So that's how you plot polar coordinates. Now let's get rid of all this extra stuff. Um, try the same thing over here with the radians. So same idea. We want to plot point A at pi over 6, 9. So on this one, I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, I'm going to run out of space. That's okay. So pi over 6, 9. Pi over 6 is up here eight, nine, so this is point A. Point B is at negative three, negative pi. So I'm going to go down and then negative pi and go backwards three, so one. So when I'm over here at negative pi, I'm kind of facing this direction to the left, but then I have to step backwards three. So one, two, three, here's point B. Point C negative seven, seven pi over four. So we're going to go up and around seven pi over four is all the way here. And then negative seven means again, I step backwards. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you're not sure what line you're on on the other side of the circle, you know, a ruler does help or something like that for a straight line, not bad. And then finally, 
negative five pi over six and five. So negative five pi over six. Uh, five pi over six in the positive direction is up here, up here. So in the negative direction is the mirror image. It's down here. So it's negative five pi over six and then five. So one, two, three, four, five. And there is point D. There we go. Ta-da. So there they are in polar coordinates. Not bad, right? Now, I used to always say, you know, everything that we do is in radians. The majority of what we do is in radians. Those degrees kind of popped up in our last example, our last notes, but most of the time it's radians. Make sure you're comfortable with those. A couple of very, very important formulas for you. In order to go from polar to rectangular coordinates, you have R cosine theta and R sine theta. I feel like we touched on that a little bit almost in our parametric equations. So your X direction is usually the cosine and the y direction is the sine. Rectangular to polar, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Where have you seen that before? It's the equation of a circle. Whoops, I'm on the eraser. That's a circle. And then tangent theta is y over x, kind of has to do with the slope. And then that's the definition of tangent anyway. So a lot of these are things that you learned before we're just kind of putting them together in a new coordinate plane. The angular coordinate is not uniquely determined. Um, and I think you talked about this in pre-calc, I hope you did, in that there's more than one way to reference a specific angle. You can go around the circle more than once, you can have that negative radius that we were talking about. Sometimes we use the negative radial component. Negative r theta is a reflection of r theta through the origin, or negative r theta is equal to r plus theta is equal to r theta plus pi. So you're halfway around the circle. All right, example one, change polar to rectangular. I'm gonna zoom out here so we can see our formulas at the same time. That's not gonna do it. There we go. So change polar to rectangular. So if I'm going from polar to rectangular, I need this first set of equations where x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So we're going to say x is 3 cosine of 5 pi over 6. And y is 3 sine of 5 pi over 6. So think of your unit circle. And yes, this should definitely be memorized. 5 pi over 6 is all the way over here. Uh, this is really your 30, 60, 90 triangle. So 30, 60, 90. This is 2, 1, 2, root 3. That's a negative root 3. If you want cosine, x is going to be 3. Adjacent is negative root 3 over 2. And y. All right, so we're looking at y equals 3 sine of 5 pi over 6. So y, need my pencil, y is equal to 3. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so 3, 1 half. So my y coordinate is 3 over 2. And if I wrote those as an ordered pair, I'd have negative 3 root 3 over 2, comma 3 over 2. Um, so there you go, polar to rectangular. Now change rectangular to polar. So again, let's use those formulas that are up above. Rectangular to polar, so I have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And then I have tangent theta equals y over x. So let's do those two things. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, x and y, just like they always have been since algebra one. So three squared plus two squared is equal to r squared. Nine plus four equals r squared. So r is the square root of 13. That's our radial coordinate. And then tangent theta equals y over x. So tangent theta is 2 over 3. Now, if it's a value that's on your unit circle, great. If it's not, that's OK, too. How do you solve for theta? Well, theta is the inverse tangent, the inverse tangent of 2 over 3. And you know, it's not a 30, 60, 90. It's not a 45, 45, 90. That's not on your unit circle. So you might want to break out your calculator for that one. 
and I'm going to just cheat a little bit and say that I already did that in my calculator and I got 0 0.588. Uh, make sure you're in radians um, in this case. So our polar coordinates are R and then theta. So square root of 13 and 0 0.588. There you go. All right, example three, find two polar representations of negative one, one using a positive radial coordinate and using a negative radial coordinate. So here's where we're gonna try the positive and the negative. All right, so we are looking for two polar representations of negative one, one using a positive radial coordinate and using a negative radial coordinate. So sometimes it helps to have a picture of these to know what you're looking at. So if we have our coordinate plane, negative one, one is over here, right? Negative one, one. So that's what it is in rectangular coordinates. And we're looking for polar coordinates. So we're going to go up and over. We gotta do a couple things. Um, we need our radial distance. From the formula above, we said x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, the equation of that circle. So negative one squared plus one squared is equal to r squared. So one plus one is r squared, two equals r squared, r is the square root of two. So that's the radial coordinate. Now, in terms of um, getting around here for our angular coordinate, and we wanna be in radians, this is negative one, one gives me a 45, 45, 90 over here. So this is kind of up 45 degrees. So I know I'm dealing with pi over four. So one pi over four, two pi over four, this is three pi over four. So theta is three pi over four. And we could list it that way as one option. We can say, all right, option one, we are looking at root two, three pi over four, positive radius, positive angle. We could also, let me switch colors here. We could also look at this with a negative radial coordinate. So we could go down and then backwards. So I could go down pi over four, negative pi over four, and negative root two. That would give me a negative radial coordinate. Now, those are not my only options. Um, you could go in the positive direction, all the way over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pi over four. and then you could have a negative radial component. So I've got negative, 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 positive, positive, positive. Um, could you do positive, negative to get to the same place? I'm just thinking out loud here. Uh, you could go in the negative direction all the way up here. That's kind of a fourth option. Um, where you would have a positive root two, and then it would be negative seven pi over four. So you kind of practice this already when you did a lot of those terminal angles in pre-calculus. So there you go. Lots of choices, lots of choices for those. Example four, find the polar equation of a line through the origin of slope three over two. My brain does not like this one at all. So remember, if you have your coordinate plane, whether you're rectangular or polar, it looks like this. We're going through the origin, and we have a slope of 3 over 2. So algebra 1 slope means up 3, right 2, up 3, right 2. So this is our point. Um, so if you were in rectangular, because this is what we're used to, this would be y equals mx plus b. This would be y equals three over two x plus zero. Now, that's what we're used to. So in polar form, believe it or not, you just need the angle. You need to know your angle. So in polar, we know that tangent theta is y over x. It's your rise over your run. So tangent theta, your rise is three and your run is two. Remember to solve for theta, we're gonna switch this around. Theta is equal to the inverse tangent of three over two. 
believe it or not, this is the equation of the line. Because polar coordinates are so focused on the origin, you don't have to say anything else about that origin, but you just have to give it the slope. And I know that feels really, really odd. Um, I get it. I totally, totally, totally get it. And that's it. We just have no radius for line. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say. Whoops. No radius. So the radius would be like a beginning and an end point, but you don't have that for a line because the line is continuous everywhere. Here's my line. It keeps going forever and ever and ever and ever. Awesome. All right, we are going to find r equals 2a cosine theta in rectangular coordinates. Yeah, so what's going on here? So r equals 2a cosine theta. Um, let's talk about what this really is. What can we turn this into here? I'm trying to think out loud. So we want to get to x and y, right? And we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. We know that. Um, hold on, I gotta pause. All right, so we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. The other thing that we know is we know that x is equal to the radius cosine theta. So we're going to take these two things and organize them or rearrange them a little bit, not organize. So x over r is equal to cosine theta, which is good. Um, and over here, we know that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I'm going to take these two ideas. I've got a little bit of a messy situation going on here, so I'm going to move this. Move this down here. So we're gonna take these two ideas up above in the box and put them into our equation. So r is x squared plus y squared. And then I have 2a cosine theta is x over r. Now, good news, we got rid of the cosine, we got rid of this radius, but in getting rid of the cosine, I've introduced another radius. So I'm gonna put that square root of x squared plus y squared in there again. So square root of x squared plus y squared equals 2ax over square root of x squared plus y squared. I suppose I could have left the left-hand side as an r and then multiplied through, but that's okay. So I'm going to multiply both sides by this denominator right here. Multiply those together. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 2ax. Now I'm in terms of x and y, which is great. We're, we're on the right track. But what is the shape really? I'm going to subtract the 2ax to the left, set this thing equal to zero, um, and then I'm going to complete the square. x minus 2a plus y squared equals zero. So I want half of the middle term, which would be a negative 1a, and square that. So that's plus a squared. So if I add a squared, I also have to subtract a squared. And when I'm all done, I have x minus a quantity squared plus y squared. And I suppose I can move this a squared over here to the right, a squared. Um, so believe it or not, I have an x squared plus a y squared. This is a circle. In rectangular coordinates, that a squared is the radius, but that a is also the shift how far it shifted on the x-axis. So we have a circle, good job. Now we are going to graph this. So in example six, using what's up above, or not what's up above, but the way we graph those first points. So if r is equal to two cosine theta minus one, we need to come up with a table. We're gonna graph this thing with a table. It's a little clumsy at first, but that's okay. So instead of an xy table, you have a theta r table. Now my grid, my polar coordinate grid 
as goes with pi over 12, but we're not going to go that far down. We're going to do pi over 6. So we're going to use 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. I'm going to choose the values that are on the unit circle because that's what I'm most comfortable with right now. And then I'm going to put them into the radius equation up here and get a radius. So this is 2 cosine 0 minus 1 cosine of Oops, make this a zero. Cosine zero. So cosine of zero is one. So this is two times one, which is two minus one, which is one. This is two cosine of pi over six minus one. Cosine of pi over six is adjacent, which is root three over two. So this is two root three over two minus one. Pi over four is two cosine of pi over four minus one. So this is two root two over two minus one. So this becomes root three minus one. And this is root two minus one. This is two cosine of pi over three minus one, which is two, gotta think pi over three, adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is one half minus one, this is zero. And this is two cosine pi over two minus one. Cosine of pi over two is zero, so this is a negative one. All right, so let's plot some of these. I don't, when your radius only goes out to one, you don't want each one of these rings to count by one because then you'll have a really tiny picture. So I'm going to make one, two, three, four, I'm going to go with this as 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to make this my radius of 1. So I'm counting this, this one, the whole circle is 1. You don't have to do it that way. You can make it a little bit smaller. But again, don't try to shrink it down in the middle. That's teeny tiny. So 0, 1 is my first point. Let's switch colors here. Let's go to a highlighter. 0, 1 is my first point. Still not happy with that. There we go. 0, 1 is my first point. Um, root 3 minus 1. So pi over 6 and square root of 3 minus 1. You might want to pull out a calculator for that. I still have to change the batteries in my calculator. Square root of 3 minus 1 is... Nope. Goodness. Point seven three two. This is point seven three two. So I am at pi over six. Point seven three two is going to be about right there. And then square root of two minus one. Point four one four. So pi over four is here, and then point four one four is going to be inside of. My point 0.5, that's point 0.25, point 0.414 is here. And then pi over 3 is 0, so pi over 3 is 0. And then pi over 2, negative 1. So this is where I have to go all the way backwards down here. Um, actually, I probably should not have made my circle so big. Well, let me show you what's going on here. If I go to connect these points, I start here. Now, polar curves are smooth curves. They're not going to be jagged. So you're not going to connect them in, in straight lines. It's going to be a smooth curve. So you're going through these points. And this one doesn't go straight down, but it's actually going to loop out to here. It's going to loop out. Now, this is only giving us part of the picture. It's not giving us the whole thing. Um, and you'll find that a lot of times these are symmetric. So let's go over here and let's try to get some of these quadrant three points as well. I'm gonna have to shrink this up. Is this our last example? Yes, it is. We can take a few extra minutes. So let's do two pi over three. Let's do three pi over four and let's do five pi over six and let's do two pi and then we'll see what happens from there. All right, on our little break there, I took and
the liberty of completing the rest of the table. Don't mind my messy handwriting. So a couple decimals uh, equivalents I want to figure out here. Well, I guess we can keep plotting points. So I goofed, I mean my graph too big, but we're just going to go with it. If I'm at 2 pi over 3, that's at negative 2. So 2 pi over 3 is up here, and then I'm going to go back down to negative 2. I'm going to guesstimate that that's down here. Negative root 2 minus 1 is negative 2.4. Whoops. This is negative 2.414. So this is even bigger. This is off my graph down here further. And negative 3 minus 1. Nope, negative root 3 minus 1. Oh my goodness. I have to put batteries in my calculator and I haven't done that yet. So I'm using a scientific calculator. Minus 2.73. 2.732. All right, so that's even larger. And then when I get to pi, and pi is all the way over here, I have to go back to negative 3. So I drastically made a huge error, but then it makes kind of the seashell shape. Now, that's only half. That's from 0 to, to pi. Now, it's not going to spiral. You might be thinking, oh, it's going to spiral, but it actually doesn't. What happens is it starts here. It passes through the origin. It gets a little bigger. And then it comes out here to 3. And then it creates the mirror image of it. So it comes up like this, like this. So that's what the whole thing looks like. I, I kind of botched the picture up above. I'm sorry about that. Should have made it smaller. But there's the other half. So if you can imagine it going off the right hand side of the screen, but I can't draw over there. So what we are going to do instead, though, is see what this looks like in your calculator. Your calculator can actually graph these. So may as well see what that looks like, right? Um, let me pause this for a second. You don't need to watch me get my calculator. All right, so here we are in my calculator. Now we're going to go back to that mode. So we've used radians and degrees. We've done a lot of that. I want to be back in radians. We have also done functions. We've tried out parametric, but hey, what's this? Polar. Yep. Use your polar. So now when you go to your y equals, it looks a little bit different. You have an r. So I'm going to type in 2 cosine theta, that xt theta button, minus 1. So this was the graph that we just tried to plot by hand. Enter. Here's my graph. Ta-da, there it is. So in your calculator, it's much, much nicer. Um, if I refresh this, I actually change this for me. I kind of wanted the graph to be big. but they've changed the button. So anyway, there you go. That's what it looks like. A lot of the times, most of the time, if there's a polar graph that's given to you, if you need it, that's given to you on the AP exam, because in our next lesson, we're going to be finding the area inside of this thing, which is kind of crazy. Um, they will give you the graph or they'll give you the equation on the calculator section. You don't usually have to plot them by hand, but I want you to know how that happens, where that comes from. So there you go, there's your calculator question. Good luck with the lesson. Let us know if you have any questions.